Stephanie here from That Notebook. So we're gonna go for a walk and talk this morning. If you haven't had your exercise yet, get your tennis shoes on, head out and go for a walk with us. Hop on your treadmill, do some weights, or if you've already done your exercise, you can just listen to us. And we are on a beautiful trail today. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. It's uh, not too far from our house, but we do have to drive to it, but it's always a treat to see what there is. So let's get going. It's a gorgeous morning. Here We're we push the super push, push, excited. Push. Oh, upper right hand corner. Here we go. We'll get you flipped around here. There Hold we on. go. I put my phone on a tether today so that I won't drop it like I did last week. Did not crack my lens, but I did crack the lens cover. So did you drop it on a walk? Or I did. did. Oh, wow. I was fumbling doing something and um, and it slipped out of my hand and and hit the trail. Okay. So just in the, you know, just on the edge, just enough to yeah. cause a problem. Morning. So good morning. So, um, so anyway, why, why we don't use, you get your we YouTube use these. fired up and see if we got sound. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, you want to see if we have sound? Yeah. He's not sure we have oh, we're sound. <coughs> we're using these little clips again. Yes, we have sound. It sounds good. Okay, good. So, um, so anyway, if you're here, please <laughs> always, say hi. I always sound good, right? You always sound good. Okay. Um, please <laughs> let us know that you're here, where you're watching from, and let us know if you're exercising along with us today. It's, this is just a beautiful time of year here in Northern California because everything is still green. We had a lot of rain this season, and so everything's really lush and green and no leaves the, on the trees though no leaves on the trees yet but look we have lots of little buds up there they're trying they're getting ready to leaf out which is really cool um but l let us know that you're here so that i don't feel like i'm talking to myself so lots of birds you'll probably be able to hear all the birds in the background as well it's going to be a gorgeous day it's supposed to be in the 70s today so excited about that tom has some yard work he's going to get after and um, so he'll have a good day for that for sure somebody's saying hello from diamond springs california that's close oh nice good morning good morning it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood you want to be my friend <laughs> <laughs> She's singing, everybody. That's, uh, that's pretty special. You're getting serenaded by Tammy. That's a rare event. That's a rare event. I'm always encouraging her to sing because she does have a pretty voice. I, dig, I can't sing in tune. It's a rare event if I sing in tune. That's why it's a rare event if I sing. Oh. But when she's in tune, it sounds really nice. There you go. Maybe I need voice lessons. So anyway, I hope you're enjoying the beautiful background here. Yeah. I've switched over to my hiking hat. I felt like my other hat would have been too warm today. So It's in the 40s. And I skipped, I didn't put a sweatshirt on. You know, you just need to watch the sound of music. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, we have lots of people yeah, watching. Yeah, because when you know the notes, notes to sing, sing, you can sing, sing most everything. everything. It's a little high in my a pitch. <laughs> Kimberly's watching from Prescott, Arizona. She's just getting up. Chris says hi from Long Island, New York. Woohoo! If they're just getting up, they must still be on the old time like us. We did not wake up this morning until a quarter till six, quarter till six, seven, six. It, Was I'm it 545 not... or 645? No, 545. Yeah, because usually we get up at five, but... We're just, we have not adjusted to the time change. So Becky says, would you please repeat where you're walking? So we are in Northern California and um, we are walking on a trail in West Roseville. So we call it an urban, urban hike, hike because we're not really hiking. There's not much elevation here. Um, there is some off-road on this one a by little choice. Bit. You can go, you can stay on the trail yeah. or you can go, I mean, you can stay on the Path. Is this the path or the trail? This is the path, I would say. On the paved path. Yes. Uh, we will be going off road. Woohoo, off road. I'm wearing my new hokas with my new runner inserts because my old hokas, we, they go, they're like car tires, they go bald on the bottom. They, they wear do. out. <laughs> and then your feet hurt, so I had to buy new shoes. 
And so hopefully your, heat, your feet won't hurt today. We've got you well padded today. Um, I, does this trail have a name? Um, Is it vet? We, it heads to the veterans park. There's a park. sign up here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But I don't know if we're going to see that sign because it's. Carrie says um, salads for lunch. Would it be too much to have smoothies for breakfast as well? No, get those greens in. You really can't eat too many greens. So, um, Dr. Esselstyn says six handfuls of dark leafy greens a day. So, go for it. Absolutely, get those, get those greens in. Uh, Kylie says, singing and walking, what a glorious morning for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad that it can come across as glorious. Absolutely. So, it is in the 40s, so it's a little nippy in the shade. And we're actually, we're going under the road here right now. So, it might sound a little bit echoey. Do you think there's trolls in here? Oh, well, no, there's no trolls. This is where we should have said, well, no, it's kind of a dead zone. It doesn't really... It's not very good. No, it's not high enough, I don't think, do you? I don't know. Good acoustics. We will have to go around this mud puddle up here. So, Tom promised me it would be dry. We walked here last week or the a week, week before and it was so muddy you should have seen our shoes at the end <laughs> we we looked frightfully scary i think yeah it was two weeks ago because we went to, to oh, buy groceries right. afterwards and people were staring at our dirty shoes oh yes yes we went to walmart to get our salad it's like where did those people here comes runner ladies oh nice that's so great oh the now the sunshine is back and feels good good morning this feels nice. So um, a lot of the trees that you're seeing here are the California oaks and they're big and very old old and the, um, when they leaf out they're really beautiful and the oak trees here yeah. are protected. Yeah. So if you buy a piece of property and you want to build a house and it has oak trees on it you are not allowed to cut down those oaks so um, you have to build around them and we've seen horseshoe shaped houses <laughs> we've seen all kinds of with, things with, with a with a big oak tree in their central courtyard because the tree was there first and so the house had to literally be wrapped around the tree yeah, but yeah these these are all hundreds of years old these big old oh here's a Gently. Big, big one right don't here. make them dizzy so Gently. That's why this park is here, because the trees were here first. Yes, so we're very fortunate. The community that we live in sets aside a lot of green space. Yeah, this tree is really cool. Look yeah. How that one is. They're just gorgeous. So, and then, you know, as the weather improves and spring moves along, then the trees will all leaf out and we'll take you on a walk and we'll show you what it's like. Okay, there's a little path over there. Do you see that? Yeah. Oh yeah, somebody's got one going that way. That's cool. Yes. Um, Sharon says, can you send us Tom's dump soup recipe? It is actually, we have a video. Do we have a video on it? We have a blog well, post. Well, we did the- So what you need to do is Google nutmeg notebook dump soup. And we have a, a page on our website well, we, about dump soup. We did that for one of the summits, right? Yeah, we did it and for AJ. And then did we AJ. post that on our? Well, the recipe is on our um, website. I don't know if we ever put the video up, but I know the, that the, the recipe. Well, I don't know if we have the video because we did it live on one of her. We for, did it for as AJ. A recording for the last year's Truth About Weight Loss Summit or something? Something. Yeah. So, but anyway, it's on the website for um, Tom's dump soup. We finally like wrote and, it down, but there's really no rules. It's whatever you want to put in it. Yeah, remember, dump soup, the dump soup recipe is like stop signs in a parking lot. <laughs> it's <laughs> mere, a suggestion. Mere suggestions. So um, yeah, I, I throw different things in there all the time. Depending on what's in the fridge. There was some cabbage that was kind of aging in the refrigerator. And I asked Amy, you got plans for this cabbage? She said, no. And so I dumped it in. 
and then there's some old tomatoes that are starting to get wrinkly on the, in our little So they're just dehydrating. They're dehydrated a bit. So you're going to toss those so in. So today, today those are going into dump soups. So, right. So yeah, it's like uh, whatever. Oh, there was a, I didn't put them in the soup. I had that, those, there was lint, those lentils you had cooked. Oh yes. And they were, they were tasty. But, those could have gone in the soup. But they weren't soup. destined into any recipe. So why well, I, I put them in a little bowl on the side yes. and had them as, as a weird meal. It was delicious <laughs> though. So I had cooked lentils as a side dish. I'd get a little broth and a scoop of lentil and eat that. And I thought, wow, I should have just put these in the soup. So anyway so anything chris, possible chris says i just loved your video on the kell awards that was great thank you so much we it had turned out to a be more blast. fun than we expected yes we had a blast putting it together and we had a blast presenting it and i think we were just a bit um, giddy at that point from having done so many lives during the bundle that that was just really fun and relaxing. Yeah. Well, for it was us. a real treat as the folks that the contributors to the bundle whose work kind of stood out to us that we featured in the awards were absolutely thrilled <laughs> to have received their Nutmeg Noble their Kale Award. <laughs> we got emails from them and said, Oh my God, goodness, thank you for recognizing my work. It was just like, it was just like being at the so Oscars when they, when they got Unfortunately, there. Unfortunately, we were not able to recognize every contributor that was in the bundle as it was. It took us over two hours just to present the ones that we did. However, there was so much amazing content that we couldn't recognize in that amount of time. So that was just a selection. So if we didn't mention someone, it doesn't mean that we didn't like their work because Actually, everybody contributed something that was really amazing for this past um, bundle. So, okay, we if go you bought the bundle, here, okay, right? yeah. yeah. So, if you bought the bundle, I hope that you have been going through it and looking at the content and are benefiting from it because over 2,000 recipes, holy moly! And today at noon is the um, Lebanese cooking uh, show from our friend Rachel Detroit. So if you haven't opened up Rachel Detroit's Lebanese cooking PDF, morning. good morning, do so because you can still go in and register for it. If you can't make the live cooking show that she's doing for the um, bundle buyers, you can um, get a replay so go ahead and register if you didn't buy the bundle but you're interested in learning how to make Lebanese food go to Rachel's site and you can um, you can get um, you can buy uh, I think a ticket to get in okay Tammy look here here's a path down into well, the wilderness we have to go oh, on I wonder one. where that path goes. I know it goes wow. along the creek so let's do it okay so um, Kylie says uh, all the bundle vid videos were wonderful. That was a lot of work for you. Has the kitchen recovered? The kitchen has recovered. I have, however, have not recovered from all the cooking, I think. I'm so used to batch prepping and, um, you know, we eat very simply. And so I don't have to cook every day on a normal week for us. So for that 10 days, man, I was cooking all the time was really fun to try all those recipes and um, that was great fun. So so, um, so this week we've been really, really busy and I haven't been doing as much cooking and we've been eating our very simple meals that we're very happy with as well. Um, but the kitchen's all put back together and um, I'm so delighted to be able to move around. All the around. studio lights are down. Oh, all the camera equipment, the extra computers and monitors and lights. And I mean, it was really set up as a, a studio kitchen for 10 days. So nice to have my kitchen back. Did a little bit of um, prep this week because I bought a watermelon. I got a watermelon, I think it was from Mexico at Costco. I cut it up, a fresh pineapple, fresh mangoes. Uh, my strawberries and blueberries and I gave those 
the vinegar treatment. We have a video that will be coming out soon um, showing you that. But in the meantime, three cups of water, one cup of white vinegar. Soak your berries for 15 minutes. Let them dry. Uh, ooh, let them dry on a... Got to be careful where you step here because people walk their dogs and don't clean up after them. Um, let them dry on a kitchen towel. Put them in a dish with a um, paper towel Are underneath there any creatures it in the lagoon to absorb the extra um, moisture and yeah. they'll last for two weeks it, the vinegar retards the bacteria that would cause mold and really extends the life of your strawberries i do rinse them a little bit with water um, the instructions that i read like online didn't say you have to do that Tammy's procedural video is coming out soon. Yes. It's in my computer. It's stuck in there. I don't know what the problem is getting it out. <laughs> Could be called editing. The guy needs to finish editing the it. The guy needs to edit. Absolutely. So, so anyway. yeah, her berries have been lasting like forever. It's amazing. They, the last few always would start to get, uh, you know, a little mycelial growth on them before she would finish the last few, but not since she started doing this vinegar. Right. It's been amazing. Yep, and especially, I, I feel like the organic ones go bad even quicker. Oh, I hear a woodpecker. Um, so I usually do like the blueberries and the blackberries first because the strawberries tend to make the most. Um, are we going, oh, let's go around because oh, that looks log, muddy. It's the log of 2004. <laughs> Look at there's a log that came across the path. We have to go around it. But, people, but it's been there for a while because look at this well-established path going oh, there around, is a path around the log. We are definitely on a permanent little path here. So, yeah. um, Hold on, let me catch up. Yes, yeah, sure. you're, left, you're leaving us all behind. I'm here. so sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, I do the strawberries last because they seem to like discolor the water. And so I do the blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and then strawberries. Okay, here we go. Ah, what a beautiful morning. There should be more people out here enjoying this. Okay, so let's see. Do we go on this little path or do we go up there? Um, we go up here usually. Okay. Let's do this one because that one, because it's in the shade, could still be muddy. Okay. I really don't want to get all muddy today. Let's go this way. You know, we need to take them on that path in Rockland that um, is so beautiful one morning. We need to go there where we go with the, the kids. So here we are. There's a bunch of water standing here. Oh, she's a climb. It is. Okay. We can do it. Let me get on the other side. Here, you hold this a second. Sure. I gotta hold it up. Well, here, hold it down here. You're holding way too high. Okay, but now we've lost ourselves. Okay. Put them out of the. So, um, plant-powered peddler Janet is walking with us in Washington. Karen says hi, Janet. It's so fun when you see people you know on on it. That's really cool. So. Here you guys, you can see all the water back here. We've had a lot of rain, so we've been getting plenty of water, which is so good because that means the pond next to our house hopefully won't dry up and the ducks will remain and the fish will be alive and because um, the fish eat the mosquitoes, which, which is really helpful for us. So um, here we go. Here we go. Okay, watch out. There's a hole here. I see it. Okay. <laughs> Gotta watch where we're going. Make sure we do okay. So, are you guys doing anything special for. Morning. Good morning. For um, St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. Will you make green food? I just posted on Instagram and on my Facebook page a um, recipe for um, mint chocolate chip nice cream. So you can make it in your high powered blender. You could probably make it in a food processor as well. You can take and freeze it in your Ninja, but if you do that, I don't put the spinach in it. It won't be green. 
then it'll be more, it'll look more like just chocolate chip ice cream. Um, but you'll. Oh, because a ninja wouldn't blend the spinach bits into the. Mix. Oh, no, you puree it first. Oh, but well then But it oxidizes when it freezes. Oh, it turns brown. And it turns army green. And it's the. You did that once and I found that out. I tried it three times. I tried different ways okay, of doing keep it. Keep right. Stay out of the mud. Yeah, a little bit of mud here today, dug on it. Um, yeah, the spinach, when it freezes, it oxidizes and turns a really yucky army green. You know how when you cut an avocado and you just cover it and put it back in the fridge if you don't eat it all? And then it turns that yucky color. That's what the nice cream does. It tastes good. You have to close your eyes when you eat it so, so you don't see the color of it. But anyway, um, try it. It's really, really delicious. So you can just call it ugly nice cream. Tastes great. There you go. And I like to use fresh mint in it. And um, we have our herb gardens gone crazy. Of course, mint takes over. Uh, but uh, it's a good way to use some of that fresh mint. And I have to say, add some fresh mint to one of your salads. It's delightful. So refreshing. And the mint with cilantro goes really well. I even like it with basil. Not in the ice cream. I'm just talking about adding it to like a chopped salad. So don't forget the fresh herbs because they are so amazing. Chris says mint is great. Yes, it is. So yesterday. Vagana is watching from Pearland, Texas. Now she says, I know what I'm watching tonight. Mm -hmm. Probably the kale awards. <laughs> um, Elizabeth says, you could blanch the spinach first. I make smoothies from my frozen garden greens and it will stay green if already lightly cooked and frozen. Well, thank you for that. I did not. We'll totally try that. I did not know that. That is a very helpful tip. I learn a lot from you guys. I love it so when you share with me. So yesterday? Yes. On the way home from piano lessons with our granddaughter? This way or that way? Um, well, there's a log across that trail. Let's do this one. Let's see where this one goes. Okay. We usually go straight, but there's a log across it. So we're going to take... A different path. Anyway, you were talking. So the the entire conversation on the way home from um, piano, piano lessons. lessons with our granddaughter was about mint. Oh. Because after her lesson, she gets to choose a treat from this basket, and you know, then the teacher is always careful to keep some, you know, um, some vegan treats in there for her plant-based students. So anyway, the whole conversation. So she picked a, a mint, a uh, uh, candy cane, mint. And so she was all talking about a how... A candy cane or a round one? A candy cane. Oh, you know, uh-huh. Leftover from Christmas. whenever. <laughs> so anyhow, she says, Lito, why, why, she calls me Lito. Um, uh, you know, Tammy, grandma, likes mint. And and my sister likes mint. And and my mom likes mint. But you and and my brother... The, uh, you never talk about how you like mint, so. <laughs> so she, but she was totally analyzing this whole mint conversation, about and I says, well, it's not that I don't like it. I just don't like, like, like want it all the time. It's like if it's in something, that's fine. We'll uh, we way. better go straight. I don't know. We can't <laughs> go that way. Okay. So anyway, yeah, she had very much mint on her mind yesterday. Um, That's so As funny. we were driving, and, and we talked about mint for a good 10 or 15 minutes about the ins and outs of why somebody would or wouldn't want to be eating mint. Well, you know, we all have so, such different yeah. personal taste preferences. Yeah. So it doesn't matter even yeah. when we grow yeah. up in the same family yeah. and everyone's offered so the same we're foods. on this really narrow trail, you guys. If you can see behind me there, Tammy is right here in front of me, but the trail kind of... It got uh, really going, narrow there. Uh, we're going to go left. Yeah, I think that goes is, to the creek. This takes us back to the other side of the log. Right. We'll go this way. It's a little wider in some places. Yeah. So, But just look at how, can you show them? I mean, it's just beautiful here. Oh, this here. section is like... And we're we're in town. We're not even outside of town. Let me town. get in this shady we're, spot and I can do a circle. Okay. 
we're in the middle of town where we live. And I just love that they set aside all of these green spaces. I know when you think of California, you think, oh, it's just house on top of house on top of house. But um, it all depends on the city that you live in. There is mosquitoes here. I do see some when we stop, mosquitoes are popping out. What's the resolution coming through on your YouTube stream? Yeah, there? it looks great. It's okay. looking as good as that. Okay, good. Fantastic. So anyway, it's just a joyful way to start the day to see all the beautiful green and trees and to hear the birds makes me happy. Hold on. Yes. Wait for me. I'm falling behind. Kimberly says, I just got a Ninja Creamy Deluxe. Do you have a sweet potato chocolate ice cream on your blog? I do for the Ninja Creamy. <laughs> so um, if you don't have a Ninja Creamy, you can make it in your blender with frozen bananas and you can eat it right away. Um, you can uh, pour it into popsicle molds and make um, chocolate fudge sickles. Remember those when we were a kid? You guys love the chocolate fudge sickles. So I have, um, if you just just Google Nutmeg Notebook Ninja Creamy, you'll find the fudge sickle, the chocolate um, recipe for the Ninja Creamy. And I, I think I link in that also to the fudge sickle recipe. So Google's always your best search engine put in nutmeg notebook and then whatever you're looking for. Um, ice cream, chocolate, whatever it might be. Do we go left here or right? Right, if you want to right. do the circle. Yeah, we'll do left the circle. Left if you want to head back to the car. Okay, we'll go this way. So, um, so yeah, it's delicious. And I have a... Oh, there's pet. Peanut, what is that? I have a, a hawk. peanut butter chocolate chip recipe. Where? He's up here on the right somewhere. He just took off from this tree and flew across. He's got a golden brown underside. There we go. Oh, See there him? he is. I do. He took off towards that way. Hawks are kind of at the top of the circle of life here. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes <laughs> there's a, a ruckus when the hawks are in town. So Stephanie says that's a pretty meadow area. Are you in California or Nebraska? We live in California. And so um, we're in Northern California and Oh, but Tom and I grew up. Morning. Good morning. Tom and I grew up in Nebraska, but uh, we've been in California since 1989. And we love it. We love the cultural diversity that we have here. We like that we have seasons where we live, but we don't get snow here. But we're just, you know, if we want to go see snow, which we don't very often, but if we want to, we can, we're not very far from it. And um, we just have so much that we can do. We're, we're like an hour and a half from Lake Tahoe. We're about two hours from San Francisco, depending on traffic. If it's a bad day, it could take three or more hours to get there. Um, so uh, we love it. So we're glad that we got to grow up in Nebraska, but um, we love California, so very happy that this is where we get to live. Um, Elizabeth says, I do the same with basil. I blanch for one minute before I food process and put it in the freezer to make pesto throughout the year for my husband, and it stays green. Okay, you guys have taught me something brand new today. I'm so excited. Elizabeth said, I love seeing the hawks and especially owls. Yes, that is always a treat. An absolute treat. So, you know, our backyard looks to a pond on one side of it, and the hawks like to come and sit on our fence and um, watch for prey. And I always am disturbed by that. And Tom Hoy says, well, that's just the circle of, the li of life because the hawk has to eat. And I say, I know, but I just don't want to be witness to it. I don't want to see that happen. But what happened when there was an overpopulation of ducks in the pond? I know. It was a mess. Well, especially when the mamas have their baby ducks, and then the hawks show up all the time looking for an opportunity to have a quick lunch. So disturbing. 
Uh, Elizabeth said, do you like the Sacramento summer heat too? Um, we don't love the heat and certainly in the last few years, it has gotten hotter here in the summers. Um, we have more days over 100 degrees than we used to, but we get what is called the bay breeze that comes in um, over from San Francisco, and it comes in. We actually at want night. to. We, we don't want to go that away because we don't don't want to do all that wet, mushy grass. Okay, so. So this there this trail jumps across, and then we have a short stint along the uh, road. Is there a crosswalk? Um, I'm not going if there's not a crosswalk. You know me. Uh, Kimberly says. I loved California for 25 years, but I'm a zoning now, driven out by high taxes. She's a what? A, zo a, a what? A zoning, probably Arizona. Oh, there you go. Yeah, this isn't, there's no light here, Tom. But there's no traffic. Yes, there is. Look at all that. Don't tell me there's no traffic. I'm not doing that. Okay, so here's where we differ. Oh, no, wait, we can go under then. Can we get back up to the sidewalk? Yeah, I think so. Let's okay. do that. Change of plans. Tom's, Tom's a risk taker. I would just run across the road and, and time it correctly. And uh, yeah, with a with a camera and an audience. Yeah, uh huh. Well, they would See? say, "Look at those people. What are they doing? What's that thing he's got? We should stop and look." And they would all stop, seeing it would be <laughs> fine. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. So um, so anyway. Our kids are here, our grandkids are here, so we will probably um, never move as long as everybody else stays here as well uh, because we wouldn't want to miss out on being with everyone. So, so anyway, and we have central air conditioning and we can always go up to the mountains to cool down. So, um, you know. So now we're now we're going under the road, guys. Yes, this is much safer. See how safe this is to go under oh, it? Oh, but it's dark and scary. Trolls could live under here. Look at this. Kimberly says, yes, Zoni is Arizona. She said, maybe it's a Southern California slang. Yeah, because I've actually never heard that before, but it makes perfect sense. Perfect Oh, it's just sense. like when we, uh, uh, we have relatives in Texas to talk about when they visit Cali and, and go, oh, that's an interesting term because we never use nobody that here. Er, nobody here ever calls But in California other states, Cali. they refer to, to California. California as just Cali. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, but nobody here says that. And, and nobody here says Frisco for San Francisco. And nobody says we pop. Call, we call it the city, going to the city. Going to the city. And yeah, so. Um, and soda is soda here. And so like Pepsi, Coke, 7-Up, you know, where we grew up in the Midwest, that was called pop. And here that's called, it's called soda. And we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. And in the Midwest, it was breakfast, lunch, and supper. So what do you guys call it where you are? Um, we just have a short bit with the traffic. Yeah. yeah. We get to turn but right. But it's safer because we don't have to risk our lives getting run over. There, get over it. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. People always look at us and smile because they don't know which way this camera is facing, so they don't know if they're on camera or if we're on camera. It's always fun to see their faces, though. Okay, now we can head over to a park. And this is a park we used to bring the grandkids to when they were little. They're too big for it, the play equipment here now. But we used to like bringing them over here. Go right. Look at the size of that log over there, it's huge. It is. There's that a log a, over here that's like five feet in diameter. Yeah, it's a big tree that fell. So, um, Elizabeth says, has your PG&E rate gone up? 
my mom uses twice the kilowatts as me. Her bill is now seven to nine hundred wow. in Sonoma, and mine is under one hundred in Montana. Fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, we're not on P and G. The the town that we're in has its own municipal utility. Yep. And um, it would go left. And it's actually a nonprofit because it's owned and operated by the city. Um, and so our rates are very uh, good. Are double digit percentage points below our neighbors uh, in neighboring towns that do have PG and E. We are on their gas, and I've seen that climb just a little bit. But we've heard from some of our friends that live in cities nearby, their electrical rates can be sometimes like nearly double ours. So, um, and that has a lot to do with how the city contracts to buy the the electricity at wholesale from the producers mm -hmm. they 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 work you know months and years ahead in purchasing their kilowatt hours for future use for the city and like some number of years ago there was a power crisis in california that was wholly manufactured by by uh, crime and corruption i think that was governor gray davis at the time he actually uh resigned his governorship as a result of the debacle um, because everybody's electrical rates like tripled one summer. Ours did not because we had electrical contracts completely outside of the whole PG&E mess yep. or SMUD, Sacramento Utility Dist Metropolitan Utility District. They got caught up in that mess. And fortunately, we were insulated from it. And we don't have blackouts where the cities around us sometimes have blackouts. They can It kind of out. sounds like we're just a selfish, greedy city. What's going on? No, we're a, it's a, <laughs> a well very well-run well run, um, city. We're very fortunate. So um, do you soccer, want to go around this or turn around here and go back? I think we'll turn around because it might be too noisy. What do you think? Well, we, uh, or do you think? What's going on? This action all the okay. way around. Let's we're we're going to go on the peripheral. So it, this is a huge um, park here and there's multiple um, soccer games going on. And so uh, it'll, it'll be busy. That way we'll get our four miles in. Yeah, we do want to get our four miles in. We can walk faster on this stretch since we got a nice sidewalk. It's true. Very true. So um, Cheryl wants to know, do you ever hike up at Hidden Falls Park in Auburn? And what is your favorite hike outside of Roseville? So we, we do. used to, but. Uh, we, we have covered high, probably most of the trails up there at Hidden Falls. We were going there back before anybody knew about it um, because we had a friend that lived up in Auburn that told us about it. And so we were going there and hiking before it became so popular. Now you have to go on and reserve a place to park your time so that you have a place to park so and you can't get in without a reservation right so we haven't been there in quite some years. time and the paths that are closer closer in the walking walking trails that are closer in are always very very busy now but if you branch out and get off of those main trails and go on some of the more obscure trails you'll encounter a lot less people. So um, I don't know that we have a favorite hike up in the Auburn area. There's- I like the American River Canyon Trail, that one mm -hmm. where we swung on the grapevine. Yes. That's my favorite. <laughs> yes, that one, that one's pretty cool. I, I, if you Google American River Canyon Trail, if you live in the region- Oh, we have a bicyclist, so it, sorry, honey. It's an aggressive one. Um, it's at least a 1,500 foot down and up because it goes from the rim of the canyon down to the bottom and then back up back again. Up. So, so, uh, so in the summertime here, you have to hit the trail first thing in the morning, very, very early to avoid the heat. And um, there's the butterfly trail that is beautiful. Um, you like the um oh what's the one homestead that, homestead Olm, Olmstead. Olmstead. Oh, uh, Olmstead. Yeah, because Olm, you know what Olm. because it's accessible it's we know it we can 
know how many hours will be there. It's got a very diverse scenery as you work around. Yeah, you can take different routes to it. It's not my favorite because there is some rocky sections that you have to um, go through. You do need um, to have uh, walking poles, hiking poles with you, and really good, uh, sturdy hiking shoes to go on that one uh, because there's a lot of rocky trails there that you have to navigate and we've been on it in the rain and there'll be a little bit of flash flooding going on and we've had some pretty interesting experiences there but many different routes that you can take on that one you do pay ten dollars to park but that money goes towards helping to maintain the trails and also there are restrooms at the trailhead, which is really nice um, and always appreciated. So, Stephanie Simpson says, when I lived in Sacramento, I had smud. Is that what you have? The Sacramento is smud, yeah. Yeah, we don't have smud. We are not in Sacramento. We're in a burb outside of Sacramento and our town or city that we live in has its own electric company. It's um, a nonprofit, and so um, we're very fortunate because we have really good rates and we have extremely reliable power. Oh, Linda's watching from Linda oh, Peterson hi, Linda. from our cruise. They're over at True North. Health Center. How's it going, Linda? You should email me, Tammy, at nutmegnotebook.com. Let me know how you're doing over there. I was thinking about you guys yesterday and wondering how it was all going. Oh, Kylie says, love the Charlie Brown Museum there in Santa Rosa. Excellent. So it's starting to warm up now out here in the sunshine. It feels good. Do you have another favorite hike? up that way? Uh, well, I don't mind Desolation Wilderness just because ah, because it's so dramatic, remote. but I know that you don't care it for Desolation Wilderness. It hurts my feet really bad. But yeah, it's it's all granite and rocks and mountains, and and but I really enjoy those trails up there. Yeah, up high. that's for you and David to do, which is, that's pretty good. So, um, I like... Oh. Oh, the camera just us? took a jump. You lost us. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Well, there's tons of trails here. Um, up by Grass Valley, Nevada City, that one where you can park along the highway. Independence Trail. Independence Trail. We like that yeah, one because at the end there's a beautiful cave you can go through. <clears throat> That's you really can, difficult. I remember how steep it is. We had to hold hands to get down the hill. Yeah, we did. But then you can put your feet in the river. And then at the confluence, um, up there, at the, we like to go on those trails too, um, up at the confluence. There is a nude beach, so you do have to be wary of that if you get back in far enough. Um, You're talking about Hoyt's Trail up by Yuba yes, City? Yes, yeah. yeah. Or by, not on Yuba City, no. Yuba River. Yuba River. North of Nevada City, Grass Valley. Yep. Yep. Um, Urban Pharmacy says, so we're having a plant-based retreat and all hiking together. Nice. That'll be so nice. So we do sometimes hike with other people. Um, and that can be fun as long as everybody's about at the same fitness level so that you can, you know, keep the pace. I think this is a soccer clinic. It's a soccer training. Is it a training? All these little kids and yeah. all the little cones. Oh, that could be, yeah. uh -huh. rather than a game. Yeah. Because it's just early. Yeah. yeah. Could be, I know, um, that's so interesting. Good morning. So, um, so anyway, tons of places to go here. Lots of places to hike. Lots of places to ride your bikes. We have Folsom Lake. 
there's trails that go um, around that area. The American River um, trails go all along the river. You can go for miles and miles and miles on your bikes. You can walk too. Some people do walk those trails as well. So, you know, lots of opportunities here for outdoor adventures and exercise as well. Okay. There's that trail that goes here, remember, that goes all the way down that road and yes. then all those trails that go way out that yeah. we used to go on. We did. Let's go here. So our grandkids. Maybe we can cut across this baseball field and maybe stay out of the mushy grass and get over there so we don't have to go along the street. Our grandkids used to live um, in this neighborhood. close to a trail area. So we started taking them out as soon as they could walk and taking them on the trails. And so they're used to that and they love it. And they can do about three miles uh, pretty easily. Oh, that one, that trail up in Rockland that has the like enchanted forest. I can't remember what the, the name of that. The, the, that one is. The, it's, it's, it's not the quarry trail, but it's the quarry. What's the name of the quarry? I don't know. But that is beautiful. Batter up, Tammy. You're on the diamond. Woohoo! I never was good at softball. So I was never good at sports. I just, not my thing. It's like I see that ball coming and I'm just like, I think I want to duck and get out of the way just in case it hits me. I think this might be a baseball diamond though. Yeah, it probably is. Huh? Okay, so I'm hoping this high ground isn't as mushy as down there. Well, so far so good. Okay. Except I think our tennis shoes are probably gonna get a little bit wet. No, but it's not mud, we're not sinking in. Kylie says, how about a Tom and Tammy plant-based retreat? Brilliant idea. <laughs> that would be a lot of work to put together. We'd need an event coordinator. Okay, I'm slowing down. Hold I on. I know it's a, it's a bit it's a little mushy. spongy, but here, let's okay. go. Let's go on the High court. Ground. We got the baseball oh, court. Okay, or, got the, the basketball court. Where'd you guys go? Come back. <laughs> we lost you. You're looking at the sky. Hello. Here we are. Okay. On our way back now. That Pass, worked. Get across the baseball court. Yep, this works good. But not baseball court. Basketball. Basketball, court. honey. That's and then, okay. of course, you got the horseshoe. Yeah. The horseshoe court right here. I don't think they call it a court. What do they call it? I yeah, what know. do you call the horseshoe game? My uh, parents played horseshoes um, when we were kids. They had a, they would set it up. Their friends would come over, and they would play horseshoes. That was always fun. We played horseshoes on the farm with real horseshoes because I bet my you grandfather did. used to have horses. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh, Urban Pharmacy says, this is what I was saying. We will all come out to you guys, hike and eat plants. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. One thing that you can do is you can um, reserve like Airbnbs up by Lake Tahoe. You pretty much have to do it a year in advance. Um, and then um, people could be in Airbnbs and then you'd be able to cook your food and um, enjoy the hiking trails up there. There's also um, biking trails up around the lake as well. Lots of opportunities for hiking and biking, places that you can rent bikes, but um, in the summertime, it is super, super crowded. It's beautiful, but there's tons and tons of people because of course it's, you know, a destination vacation. Um, so it's something that where you really have to plan ahead to be able to go up there if you want to stay over. So we are fortunate that we live close enough. We can go up early in the morning. We can be there at a trailhead and park our car and um, you know, only a few other cars there, but then when you come back at the end of the day, the parking lot will be just jam packed, but then we get to leave and come home. And so that makes it really nice. 
for us, but um, Urban Pharmacy says, oh yes, <laughs> let's rent Airbnbs and do that. And then, you know, I suppose you could do some group meals where people cook in their Airbnb and then you gather together for a potluck um, down by the lake or at a park nearby could do that so oh lots of things we could do right if we had lots of extra time to plan all of those things so um we've even talked to good morning other bloggers youtubers in the plant-based community about wouldn't it be fun to do something where we could all get together and you know talk about what we do and relax and have fun and, oh I guess we need to have a some kind of a conference or something for people so anyway oh it's going to be gorgeous today that sun feels so good it's really going to help our flowers and our trees are going to leaf out so something's been getting me lately um, in our neighborhood. I haven't been sneezing over here. So, but something that's in bloom in our neighborhood has been getting me. And our daughter said her allergies are kicking in as well. So it's just that time of year. I saw that when we were in Costco the other day, they had a, a lot of allergy meds on the end caps of the aisles. I thought, oh yep, it's allergy season again for sure. It is. So, what else do you wanna talk about, you guys? You can ask me questions if you wish. I'm happy to answer your cooking questions or questions about plant-based living, plant-based eating. If you live in the Northern California area, I posted on my Facebook page that Dr. Neil Barnard is coming to town in April, and he will be talking about his new book, The Power Foods. We had him on um, week before last. Uh, he was on our show talking about his new book. So look at that post. If you don't live in the Sacramento area, still click on that post because it takes you to his website where it gives you all of the speaking engagements he has coming up to talk about his book. So see if he's going to be near you. He is a fabulous speaker. We've had the fortune to, is it fortune? We've been fortunate, fortunate enough, to, <laughs> enough have seen him twice to have seen him in person. speak a couple times in person. And um, he just does such a great job. And He's a really good person to take your friends who are plant curious um, to hear him speak because he isn't radical. He's very calm. He's a bit soft-spoken and he just can make it sound so easy. Good morning. Um, to adopt this lifestyle. He just makes it really simple and um, has such a nice casual approach to it, which I think is really nice for people who are plant curious. And every time we've heard him speak, we have learned something new and um, been able to tweak or change something that we're doing just to improve our um, nutrition. So, and his new book is great. The Power Foods book, and it actually, I believe it will ship on March 26th, so it's coming up. You can pre-order it from your favorite bookstore or Amazon. We have a link for it in the show notes on our, our interview with him, and um, so if you haven't seen that, do watch it. It was really um, a very good informative 
time with him. Kylie says, more about retreat ideas. <laughs> uh, Kylie says, I need to download the bundle. We purchased and looked at all the wonderful recipes. Okay, so on the bundle, when we first downloaded our uh, contributor uh, files from that, um, where we got images of all of the authors and you know all of the information about what was in the bundle, it was a big file. It was over four gigabytes. So every day for nine days, I talked about <clears throat> make sure you got a thumb drive that's more than four gigabytes. Right. But I found out later, later from one of our viewers that the the one that's compressed for download by for purchasers you guys. is less than one gigabyte. Uh huh. So I was wrong about that because I was refer I was thinking about what our we... file size, which had a whole bunch more stuff of support uh, information uh, that, that isn't in the one that comes out directly to you because, you know, like high resolution photographs of, of all of the contributors, pictures of their book covers, you get all of that in your download. But we had a lot of extra imagery in our download, which is what I saw when I downloaded. So I was quoting what I saw which was not applicable to what you get. So <laughs> don't be alarmed by if you watch a video that's talking about four gigabytes. That's that's not true. It's less than one gigabyte. Right. Oh, well, you know, if you get around to downloading it, and if you remember me saying four, that's why I'm bringing it up. If you watch any of our bundle shows, I probably said four gigabytes somewhere. I think it's like 550 megabytes or 600 megabytes. It's less. It's mm -hmm. almost half of a, only half of a gigabyte. Right. So a lot of people are already starting to ask me on social media about ideas of what to make for Easter. So if you bought the bundle, you have 2,000 recipes to choose from, including my Cooking for Company Easy Plant-Based Entertaining book that has over 50 recipes, 10 full menus and instructions on what can be made ahead of time, what you can make and freeze ahead of time, what you can make earlier in the week just to make that day easier. I also have a brunch recipe menu in there as well. I really like to do brunch. I think that that's, um, for some reason to me, it just feels easier. Morning. Good morning. I don't know why that is but it just feels easier sometimes to do brunch. And because we don't typically eat breakfast when we're at home, we do when we travel, but when we're at home, we don't typically eat breakfast. So getting to have tofu scramble, pancakes, waffles, breakfast potatoes, um, those kinds of things is a real treat for us. So maybe that's why I'm drawn to it, but um, if you didn't buy the bundle and you're interested in that mm -hmm. book, Tom will be working on getting that up on the website um, in the next few days. And then you will be able to um, purchase it. And any one of the menus that's in there would be delightful for Easter. What we don't try to do, I know a lot of people on the standard American diet um, have ham for that meal. I know that at least that's what was popular when we lived in the Midwest. That's what our mothers would do. We don't try to recreate a fake ham, um, especially if we're having people over. We've established our own new plant-based traditions. Yes, and so one thing that our family loves is to have the falafel, the Mediterranean meal, with the falafel patties and hummus and tzatziki sauce and I have a gluten-free tabbouleh and um, fresh we do fresh fruit we also do corn on the cob because that's something that you know the kids will eat as well so um, and what we've decided as plant-based eaters is that you know there are no rules about what we have to have for a certain holiday or a certain meal. I mean, you know, 
many of you eat vegetables for breakfast. You have a salad or you have a green based smoothie with a little bit of fruit. And, you know, so make what you like. I also find when we're cooking for company that doesn't eat plant based, that ethnic food is really easy to do because like the falafel meal, there is no expectation that there's going to be any meat with that meal. If I make Indian food, you can, you know, make all your Indian dishes plant-based and um, because it's not what they probably normally have, they don't have an expectation that it should be this or that. So can you have lasagna for Easter? You bet, you can have lasagna. Um, you know, you can make my Alfredo sauce and you can have Alfredo over pasta. You can do a shepherd's pie. Uh, there's so many things that, that you can do that people will like. And then the non-plant eaters that come to our house, we let them bring whatever they want. If they, if they want to bring some, something that has food in it that we don't eat, that's okay because my entire meal will be something that everybody can eat. And so that's just our choice. That's how we deal with the holidays. I know when I was first plant-based, I really fretted over what to make because I was just so worried that they wouldn't like the food. But I soon realized that good food is good food. Ours just happens to be plant-based, healthy, but yet it's delicious. So everybody can enjoy it. So um, there's so many things that you can make. Oh my goodness, my chocolate peanut butter pie, oh my. I just, I made one and I've got it in the freezer and I'm gonna save it for. Um, I had to move it yesterday to get to my blueberries. Oh, well we should put it in the big um, freezer in the, in the garage. I should probably pop it in a Tupperware yeah. and put it in there. And I'm gonna save it for Easter because um, you drizzle that chocolate sauce over the top of it and sprinkle some chopped nuts. You can make it high fat, low fat. You can use peanut butter powder instead of the peanut butter. Um, for company, I do make the richer foods just because they are going to enjoy those more. It doesn't derail me because, you know, that one meal that month that is higher fat and higher in sodium is not going to alter my health. I don't have any health condition that it would be a problem. So I'll use a little bit of salt in my cooking when I'm cooking for company. If you can't have that little bit of extra sodium, make sure you give them a salt shaker and tell them to salt their food. Otherwise, the food's gonna taste flat to them. So, so anyway, um, it's easy for me to say don't fret about it because, you know, we've been eating this way, oh, for 11 years this month now. And so, you know, I've got my uh, tried and true favorite company recipes down that uh, everybody loves and Many of which is shared they're, cooking for company. Yeah, they're in that ebook that we included in the bundle, and it will be up on the website for sale in the next couple of days. So, uh, Kylie says the Indian dishes looked amazing. They were delicious. They were absolutely delicious. I did go to the Indian store. Oh, the great and, North Indian cooking cookbook. Yep, from the bundle is. Uh, Pretty amazing. What are you up to this weekend, Elizabeth wants to know? Any gardening? And um, <laughs> has your sciatica been staying away, Tammy? So, yes, um, I was having a few issues during the bundle week just from sitting so much because for me, it's different for everybody, but um, sitting is a trigger for me. And, um, but, you know, as um, soon as the bundle's over, 
I got to be standing up more, exercising more, more active, physically moving during the day. I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for asking. And for um, gardening. Well, we're going to be cutting kale because we've got a lot of kale. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, I got to look up the beets. I think the beets are probably ready. They might be ready to pull to out. Pull. Yeah. So it's Ooh. harvest time, and and I got to reset our shade garden for summer, which is uh, going to be a little bit of uh, quite a bit of prep work, and I got to finish cutting down a tree. So. Yeah, so we had a birch tree in the backyard die. Actually, I cut it down yesterday. I just have to get my chainsaw out and cut the log, which is too heavy to move into manageable pieces. Yeah, so, so. it'll be a busy, uh, a very busy weekend. So, and I think, I think we're having a family get together tomorrow night, but not at our house. So tomorrow I'll probably be making um, usually the family wants my Caesar salad with the ultimate Caesar dressing. And you can get that recipe is on the blog for the ultimate Caesar dressing. So I'll probably be making that tomorrow. And then um, I'll probably be making a dessert that I can take and share. But that would be something that um, I, I don't mind eating. So... Uh, so I'll probably be doing some cooking with that tomorrow. We also have to go grocery shopping this morning yet. We have to get our salad ingredients so we can batch prep our salads. And um, there's always plenty of work to do. And then, oh, Tuesday, you guys are for sure going to want to tune in. Um, Elizabeth says no bike ride. You know, we haven't. I haven't been bike riding for the sciatic thing came up. for about three years because of my issues with my sciatic nerve. As I said, sitting is a trigger for me, and I've just been really concerned about the sitting on a bike um, for you know 16 to 30 miles and what that would do to my sciatic nerve. So. Tom goes bike riding, but but I haven't been for a while. But I have some interest in getting perhaps an e-bike and um, thinking that that might be beneficial for me. Um, so then if I do have trouble when we're out, then I would have the backup you, power. You want to have a battery backup for your, uh -huh. for your legs? Yeah, just in case. So. Well, we should give our our viewers this morning uh, uh, advance notice of what yes. we're announcing formally tomorrow. Yeah, I was going to. Yeah. Okay, great. So, do you want me to do it, or? Yeah, because because you're here this morning, you're getting breaking news. <laughs> okay, so J.K. First, thing I'm going to say J.K. says um, I've been on spring break this week from teaching, and I've spent almost every day in the garden getting things ready for spring planting. Lots of cleanup can't wait to plant that sounds fantastic there's something so reassuring about digging in the dirt and just being outside getting your hands dirty and being in touch with nature that's just awesome sounds like the perfect spring break to me so um, so one thing that we are working on is um, you guys know that we have our series going with Sia from 60 Living. We had technical issues My last computer Tuesday. Died. So Tom was getting everything set up. His computer that we normally use for streaming died, like died. So he had to switch to my computer. And Which we don't usually use for streaming. Yeah, and it's older and um, it did not do well with this stream. Morning. Good morning. You guys could see me. You could hear me. But the picture was very blurry. But um, as they say, the show must go on. So we plugged ahead. The information was amazing. See his picture was crystal clear. So um, hopefully you guys were able to um, watch that. If not, you can watch the replay and 
You can actually just listen, listen to, to it, it while you're cooking, cleaning, gardening, what have you. There wasn't really anything. Did Sia have just a little bit of graphics she was showing yeah. for a very short time? Right. So you really wouldn't miss out on anything with my screen being blurry. Um, so you could just listen to it instead. And um, this coming week, we will be talking about, oh, last week we talked about community, how important it is to have community when you're eating whole food plant-based. And we had lots of ideas on how to find a community or create a community, either online or in person where you live. This coming week, we're gonna talk about what we eat in a day. So. Um, that should be fun and we're bringing on the guys so Tom and Sia's husband Dominic will be joining us and they'll be sharing what they eat and they'll be sharing about their whole food plant-based lifestyle so we're excited for that that will be Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific time two o'clock Eastern. But before that, on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, which will be noon Eastern, please join us. We have a really big event annual coming event. up. It's an annual event. I don't know, is this the fourth year? Yeah, it's, ti it's, it's time year. for the perfectly imperfect Holland Bull Mill Nutmeg Nope book extravaganza sale yep terms and conditions apply quantities are limited <laughs> so it's true so, so what does all that you... mean uh throughout the year uh holland bull mill sets aside the bulls that are not like absolutely perfect they will have uh some weird grain in them um maybe oh, a knot someplace yeah knot or something and so all of the bulls are, are highly functional. We ask them to, you know, uh, to keep doing the sale because people that are using the bowls for chopping, I mean, you're gonna take a mezzaluna knife and you're gonna chop your salad in the bowl. So the bowl needs to be functional and solid and durable. And if it looks nice, great, but my old beechwood bowl, its most noticeable feature is its green patina from the chlorophyll from the vegetables I chop in it. Uh, it's a functional tool for me in the kitchen, and if it had a knot somewhere, that would be of no consequence to me, or uh, or an unusual grain or something. Some folks from previous years have gotten their imperfect bowls with quote-unquote unusual grains and thought them to be beautiful enhancements on their otherwise not perfectly monochromatic wood grain bowl. Yeah, I mean, we have had some people email us and said, I think Holland Wood Bowl made a mistake. I think they sent me a perfect bowl instead of an imperfect but just know it's a wide range of imperfections. So there could be like a little piece of bark on the outside. We'll show you some samples on Tuesday of imperfect bowls. And Corey from Holland Bowl Mill will be joining us at about 9.15 and he'll um, show us some samples of what they have. So we can't give you prices yet. You also will not be able to um, go direct to Hollandwood Bowl um, on Tuesday. You have to use our link because this is a special a program sale. just for Nutmeg Notebook followers. And so if you're not on our email list, go to nutmegnotebook.com and sign up now. We try not to spam you. We never share your Except email. during Bundle Week, which except is now over. <laughs> except Bundle Week, which is over. But what we will do is at nine o'clock, you will get um, the, all of the information, the link. Um, we will be providing the link on our live show. Yeah, it'll show. be programmed to transmit at 9 o'clock. Yeah. We're going to stop so, in the shade, Tammy. Okay, perfect. And so we're super excited. This is um, a much more affordable way for people to get a Holland Bowl. It's also a great time to buy a um, bowl for a wedding gift, an anniversary. A graduation. Yeah, and um, if you want that to be a really, you know, pristine Mother's one, Mother's Day. When you do an imperfect, 
purchase, then you are immediately emailed a coupon for 15% off anything else on the regular site. So if you're considering, you know, a gift like but, that. But you have to use that in a different order. Yes. The 15% discount will not count towards the yeah, Holland get, Bowl. Right. Because the, the Holland Bowl Imperfect Bowls will already be yeah, at a substantial yeah. discount. So don't confuse them. Yeah, af yeah. After you've completed your Imperfect purchase, you will then receive an additional email from Holland Bowl Mill with the 15% off an additional separate purchase. If, if you wanted to gift somebody, that's why that came to okay. mind. Right. Stephanie. Um, says, are these perfectly imperfect bowls have the same warranty or is it different? It is the same warranty. So what they do is they make sure that the bowls that they are sending to you, they will have an imp imperfection, but it will not impede the bowl from being used for chopping in to last. They'll have so structural they integrity. They'll have in structural integrity and you will still get the lifetime guarantee on the bowl. And so um, just, yeah. um, you know, you can't, I mean, you can't get any better So we'll have a complete that. show and tell on Tuesday at 9 a.m. with all the details, uh, examples of what an imperfect bowl may look like. Each and every one is a unique experience. Um, the, the wood also is a surprise selection. They, you, you order by size, you're ordering by size only. They make a, sele a surprise selection and ship it to you, but with the substantial, you know, we've not had. Uh, they said you can put your preference in the um, the notes. The notes and at the when you're placing your order, there's a place for customer comment or note. You can put a preference in there. They will do their best to honor that, but you know, when they run out of imperfect cherry bowls, then, then they they have to go to Beechwood or Maple or whatever or maple there is. or w whatever they have. Um, in stock so they will try to do that you also will still get free engraving on the bottom details um, on Tuesday yeah we'll give we you all, to go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you the rest of the details on Tuesday so that if you are on our email list you will get a notification Tom will be sending out an email um, with the link to that show and the link to the show with Sia because we're we'll be on from like 9 to 10 10 30 yeah, and it's going to be and Bull, a special and then after that we will be on with Sia yeah it's going to be a special link too it's not our usual right it's, it's not, not it's our not usual. the Holland Bull Mill mm -hmm. forward slash nutmeg link it is a nutmeg notebook imperfect sale dedicated link so that's why it's important to, to subscribe to nutmegnobuck.com to get that link. That's right. It'll be in the show that's notes. The, it's the only way that you'll be able to purchase it. It's only available um, through yeah. us and through that specific It'll be in the YouTube show notes as well. On Monday. Okay. But not before. And then after, join us for the, the um, class with Sia. And um, of course, that is free and we're doing eight weeks. We're so excited to be collaborating with her. And if you haven't given us a thumbs up on this video, please, please, please give us a thumbs up here. That helps our One ratings. One last question and we gotta go. That helps our ratings. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed to Nutmeg Notebook, do it now. Click the bell that's next to subscribe because then when we go live, you'll get a notification so you won't miss anything. Or if we put up a new cooking video, you'll get it. Um, Amy Martin says, I'm plant-based in Solano County, California, and would love to meet other like-minded people online or in person. Do a search on Facebook, see if there is a vegan um, group. Watch last week's Sia and, and Tammy and, video. Yep, watch last week's um, video with Sia. We gave lots of ideas. And we know that on, there are plant-based people in your area because we're familiar with that area. Um, Auntie Venom says, I'm off on Tuesday and looking forward to this. Great. We hope you can join us. Um, I think, oh, Stephanie said, have you ever made Ethiopian injera using teff flour and had success? I have not tried um, making that myself at all, ever. Not the regular one, none. So um, I don't have any um, hints or tips to give you on that. But I bet if you Google it, there's probably somebody who's got a really great YouTube video on how to do that. And that would be great. So you know what? That's it, you guys. And we'll do walk today, I think. Um, I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we, we help, help you, you get, get healthy and stay healthy, healthy one, one walk, walk at, at a time. time. See thanks, you next time. Thanks so much for joining us, you guys. We really appreciate you hanging yeah. out with See us. See you Tuesday. Bye.